Okay, so I'm just going to go through again how to set up a group within your own class. Um, the first step is to look at people. And then from there, you're going to create the group over here. So you plus sign that, and that would create a new group. You can see this class already has um, two groups in it. And I think you guys are supposed to join this one this week. So that gives the option for the students to do that. You can also pull and plot people into groups if you want to set them yourselves. Once you've done that, you then have the option to create assignments using these groups. So the next thing would be to do is go into any assignment. So let me go into a later assignment. You're not, you're not on my screen. What's going on? Am I not screen shared? Can you guys all see me? Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm going to go into, let's see. Excuse me, Caitlin, where are you? You're not on my screen. I'm here. Maybe click your settings so that it has it, so it shows speaker. Is that working? Do you see my screen, Brent? No, it's, nothing's happening on it. Um, it's just the introduce yourself edit screen. Say that again. Yeah, it's just showing that introduce yourself edit screen that you were on before. Oh, I see. Okay, let me just stop the share real fast. Restart. Does someone have a, a radio TV going in the background? Mm -hmm. We can hear it. I have a TV. I'm going to turn it off. Thank you. All right. I forgot about it. Okay. So if I go into a discussion, so this was, you guys didn't see the first one. Let me just do that again real fast. So you go into people and then you click set groups. We already have two groups created. So those were created from clicking this icon right here. So you can name them. You can allow them to self sign in. Um, this right here, if you have your classes linked together, that means that students could cross sections if you don't have that clicked. So that might be something to click if you have your classes. Um, you have different settings for that. So once you've done that, you go into any assignment that you've created, or if you're creating an assignment and you want it to be a group assignment. So I'm going to show you with week seven. Here's a discussion. So I could change the setting so that only people in the groups can have that discussion. So if I did that, made this a group discussion. Oh, and Sherry did it. So the only people who can talk to each other are the people in the group you're joining this week. If I wanted to make it the, the Canvas new tool presentation, I would click on this one and it would set the, the group for that. So you can do that with, um, discussions you can do it with projects or assignments so that they can submit it and that's how you use groups in canvas any other questions on that okay. any other questions things you want us to go over today i had a question about using the table uh in our you know the first um content we're doing and uh, your comment was that uh, the, the, the accessibility tool could not read or the, the color was too light and I was trying to put a darker color in and uh, I couldn't get the whole row to uh, highlight. You would highlight the whole table and then put the dark color in and not just the, the header uh row and i so i went cell to cell and had to put how to do color. that i just highlighted each cell in the header row and then put in the color i wanted and uh, i couldn't get the whole row to highlight because it would just highlight the whole table right doing a table is tricky one thing that you might do is if you have a document if you do the accessibility check It'll oftentimes go and fix exactly what you want it to fix. Um, okay. So that might yeah, be the I, easiest way to approach it. It did that for me when I was putting in the table. It wanted a header, 
which is basically just highlighting the row that I'd used. And then it said add a caption, but I clicked on it and it did it for me. So, yeah, using the accessibility checker, I mean, you should intuitively know what how to build the accessibility in to make it um, legally meeting requirements. Um, Caitlin, actually, if I can check, would you mind if I showed your table briefly for a moment? Sure. All right. Okay. Uh, let me share screen. Okay, so this is your table. Looks great, by the way. Uh, if you are trying to put one of those HTML color codes in, um, first click on the first cell. So I just, you know, put my cursor in that activity one. Then I'm going to come up here to my table option in the, the toolbar. And this time I'm going to go down to row and row properties. Wow. That brings up your options to go to advanced and you put in the background color for that entire row. Oh, okay. okay. So instead of doing it one at a time or the entire table, um, look for that option. So again, it's put your cursor in the row, then come up here, go to row, row properties, and then advance, and you'll see that option, okay? Okay. Carrie, can you click on the accessibility checker just to show everybody what that looks like? Sure. And you have so, a, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, did I move it in the right place? You are, you're so good. When, you, when you're looking at the, yeah. at the rich content editor, you have the little, the guy over here that's got his arms, akim, arms and legs akimbo. Uh, that's going to run your accessibility check. So when you see something pop up over here on the side, um, it wants you to address it, and it will usually walk you through the process. So like for this one, uh, if you click format as a list, it's gonna reformat that for you, okay? Um, you may not want it to do that though. You may wanna do something else, in which case you would go back and check it. When everything is as good as it thinks it needs to be, which is still not always perfect, it'll give you balloons. Make a little, little celebration, you got it. But I will caution you that it's not always 100% correct. Like I think um, uh, URLs, it doesn't always identify as needing to be changed, for example, that sort of thing. So you, you still need to be a little smarter than the accessibility checker, but it will help you with most things. What does it not like about your problem? Well, remember, you should not have a full length URL on a page. You should have an embedded link to a URL. So one of the common ones that I saw on the orientation module was that a lot of people have the, the full link, for example, to the student services website at Mercer College. Instead, if you write the words Mercer College Student Services, you highlight it and then you insert that link as a hyperlink. So you shouldn't see a, a full length URL for any web um, address on a page. It should be a hyperlink every time. And Word doesn't catch that either. So just be, be careful about that. Um, yeah, I learned that. <laughs> a lot of you. I felt bad. There were so many people that had URLs just in there. I'm like, oh, they probably did the accessibility checker thinking they were good to go. Um, what is it, out of curiosity, what is the reason for that? Why don't they like URLs? It has to do with screen readers. Oh. You know, if you think about a screen reader, if you read a URL, do they make yes, sense? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Versus seeing it rec it'll recognize a hyperlink. And then it'll read the title of that link versus that long combination of letters and numbers that is the web address for that site. So uh, if you think about it that way, it starts to make more sense. Yeah, it, it right? does. Yeah, it you would never want to read a URL. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, any more? Any more questions on that? Because I, I did have something I want to show you guys that I hope. Uh, makes the coming weeks a little bit easier on you. Uh, I wanted to talk about copying and duplicating things in Canvas. How's that sound? Do that. <laughs> let's, let's do that. 
Um, okay, so let me screen share again. Okay, so this is a sandbox course that I've been playing in. Okay, here's my home page. So one of the things that you can do uh, to work a little bit more effectively in Canvas is create template assignment or discussion boards, pages even, and then duplicate them. So you're not recreating the same thing over and over, like um, you know directions and grading and so on. So let me show you in a in the discussion board first. All right, can you guys see a discussion board? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here I created something called a discussion board template. And all I did for this was go in and create the basic that I know I need on every discussion board. I need a purpose, an overview, um, I'm going to have directions. They may change though, but I need that heading in there. Grading, feedback, um, and that a bit more clarity board that you know, generic on all discussion boards, okay? So I created that. I also came up here and I attached a rubric. So this is my basic discussion board rubric. All my discussion boards are 20 points, uh, 10 for that initial post, 10 for the responses, and so on, okay? So that's my basic template. Now, the three, um, the three dots up here are going to be your, your editing um, tools for that complete assignment. So let me go back to the main discussion board page. So this is a, a nine week course that I'm going to be building. So I know I'm going to have at least nine discussion boards, potentially more, um, depending. So if I come here, I have that template. I'm gonna click on the three dots over here on the side. I'm gonna duplicate it. There is a first copy. So I need nine, I'm gonna duplicate it again, and just keep going until I have as many as I need. Then when I go back through, I can just customize each of those templates with you know, a unique prompt, maybe unique instructions. Um, the points are there, the rubrics attached, it's good to go, right? So instead of each time recreating a rubric, each time retyping those directions, you can just duplicate that here. Now the same thing is possible in assignments. So, you know, again, English teacher, what are some of my assignments that we have duplicates of that have the same basic guidelines as this, right? So I would come here, create that one basic essay template, go to the three dots and duplicate it, okay? Um, however many times I want. So if you have a homework assignment that maybe is a regular assignment for you, maybe you have it um, each week, you have students you know, answer, I don't know, 10 questions based on the chapter, right? You could do it once and then duplicate that assignment however many times you need it, okay? Uh, this is the kind of thing that really helps you create a lot more content quickly because then you just have to go through and customize it, okay? Um, any questions about this? I, try, I tried the, the overview, uh -huh. and it kept changing it back to the number that I duplicated, even when I went in to change it. It changed, what do you, say that again. So I tried overview one, okay, and then I duplicated it to two, to three, to four. Uh -huh. After three, it kept going back to overview one. Saying it was overview one, even when I went in there and 